What stupid laws exists? Because people were assholes. You can't keep an ice cream in your back pocket in some parts of America. In the olden days, when everyone rode horses you couldn't just hop on a horse and ride away. That's stealing. But if the horse followed you home that's okay. So people used to put ice cream in their back pocket to make the horse follow them. You can't have BBQS in my local park, because people used to set fire to the tables. So they were barbecuing the tables. Chewing gums are banned in Singapore, because assholes were sticking it everywhere. Pickles have to be able to bounce in court, since two guys were jerks, and sold expired ones. If they don't bounce, they aren't pickles. In Ohio a policeman is allowed to bite a dog, if they think it will calm the dog down. Why the fuck would that calm the dog down? This is probably following that myth of establishing dominance in a single move. T-posing would be more effective. Can't have more than 7 dildos in Texas. I mean, how many would you need? And at what is the number where most people would say you have a problem? As someone who buys and sells used dildos, I can tell you that this law has made my life that much more tedious. When I lived in a state that didn't have this law I was able to have a much larger inventory. At times the trunk of my car would contain up to 100 new and refurbished dildos. But now that I'm in Texas I can only have 7 with me on my sales calls. Sometimes my clients just don't want any of the dildos I have to offer and will buy nothing. This leaves me with the expense of traveling to meet my client as well as time and labor to clean the products after they have been tested. When I was able to transport as many as I wanted, my clients would eventually find something they wanted. If you have made it this far into the video you are legally obliged to subscribe. In Denmark there is this old law that, if you find a child who is not claimed within a certain amount of hours, you can claim the rights to it. Well now you just let all the sex slave traffickers know. Great job. Not a law, but let me rant about this situation here in my city in Austria. Some assholes dumped their trash to the wrong trash cans. Now they enclosed every trash place in a huge metal cage. Now if I take out the trash I always have to unlock this huge metal door. First I have no free hand to mess with keys. Second it's loud as hell and third it's fucking stupid. In my country, people complained the dumpsters were attracting rats. So the city decided the best solution is to simply remove the dumpsters. People continued putting their trash in the same place, just without the dumpsters. It was a worse situation then. I've heard that you can't get a fish drunk in Idaho, or Ohio. I can't remember which one. I don't know what the story behind this is, but I can't imagine them deciding to make this law for no reason. I'm betting it has something to do with illegal fishing tactics. Chuck a bunch of alcohol into the water and proceed to easily catch the drunk fish. In the UK Parliament, it's illegal to wear a suit of armor. We have a law where, if you have a dog and only have a beware of dog sign on the front, but not on the back door we would be liable if our dog bites a robber that came through the back. So that's fun. You know the dude who pushed for that sold signs full time lomfeo and probably robbed houses on the side. Not exactly a law, but in a prior job, our rule book that was written by Transport Canada specifically stated that gloves were not to be put in the microwave. Edit, because why keeps coming up, someone had wet gloves, threw them in to dry them. They caught fire, and they had to stop the train and evacuate, holding up rail, freight, and passenger traffic for hours, until the unit was inspected, and could be moved. Not a law, but a school rule. In my county you can't use your phone on the bus, because some kid recorded two assholes fighting. This seems like those children were helping the police. <laughs> Having to take your shoes off at airport security one guy makes a shoe bomb, and we all pay the price. Only in the US. In Europe only some shoes need to be x-rayed, like boots, stilettos, or any with metal on them. <laughs> Women aren't allowed to buy alcohol in Sri Lanka. <laughs> Don't most laws exist, because of one asshole or another? You beat me to it. I was going to say all of them. All laws exist, because people are assholes. If people could just stop being assholes for a minute, we'd be fine. I know in New York garbage trucks had to change their entire design, costing millions and many complication. Basically a whole fucking mess all, because some old lady was walking her dog and simply walking into a moving garbage truck. She didn't have the right of way, truck did nothing wrong, which killed her dog. 
she sued and apparently won, blaming the design of the garbage truck. Like WTF. Not that surprising. In cases like this, the jury can easily see the opposition as heartless or emotionless. Like are you seriously defending your right to run over dogs? A lot of cases are won, not by who's more right but by who's more empathetic. I heard it's illegal to garden in New Zealand. Saw some gangster granny growing avocados in the backyard, and she masked her face. Rather sad actually. The made up law of having to provide any one water upon request in, as when no such law exists. Fuck off Karen get your own water. It's more likely someone's confusion between a restaurant slash bar slash fast food joint and normal people. Most places have a law that in a service establishment, if you ask for tap water it is free and cannot be denied. And if tap water cannot be provided then they must provide bottled water. So some idiot who heard that in a bar they have to give you water and can't charge you assumed random guy in the street had to do the same. <laughs> Carrying water on airplanes. Because some stupid terrorist. In Alaska it is considered an offense to push a moose out of an airplane. More likely the law actually says something, like it is illegal to throw an animal out of a moving vehicle and people just chose the craziest example they could think of. Right. There's a crazy law meme going around, that it is illegal to fish from the back of a giraffe in Boise, Idaho. The real law says it is illegal to fish from the back of any animal. It exists because people were fishing from horseback and messing up the land of people living by the river. 13 of the dumbest laws in every state Alabama. No stink bombs or confetti Alaska. No getting drunk in a bar Arizona. No spitting in public Arkansas. Must pronounce state name correctly California. No nuclear weapons. Obviously Colorado. No catapulting Connecticut. Pickles must bounce Delaware. Strict trick or treating times enforced Florida. No selling children Georgia. Can't eat fried chicken with utensils Hawaii. No billboards Idaho. No cannibalism Illinois. No fancy bike riding. <laughs> Allow me to paint a picture. Imagine sitting down at a sleepy seaside restaurant on a dark, shitty, typical New England winter afternoon. The sign out front probably reads someone's nautical themed monica. Caps or skippers or something. It's a small place, got a mom and pop feel, with red gingham tablecloths made of plastic topped with cheap wicker baskets of oyster crackers and tins of Old Bay. On one wall there's a collection of paintings, all of the same lighthouse, but each in their own distinct art styles. A mural of Popey stares at you from the opposite wall, curling one arm, and pointing at a tattoo on his bicep with the other that reads you are here. You just want comfort food. Something to make you forget that you haven't seen the sun in two weeks. Something that'll help you forget about the gale force wind that you had to fight against just to get in the door. Something that'll warm your bones and stick there. You look over the menu and see clam chowder. Buttery and creamy, a nostalgic staple of your childhood. Served with bottomless, fresh, hot chewy sardo rolls. And it's only 8 bucks. Oh that's it, chief. The hunger goblin with an exclaims. You order your meal and finally begin to settle into your seat. It's warm in here. There's a faint scent of the sea, but it's masked by the steaming basket of fresh rolls that's placed before you. There's a dish of individually foil wrapped butter in front of you. The bowl and the butter within are ice cold, but that's okay. You ferret a few pockets beneath the pile of rolls, to warm as you rip open the first ball of bread heaven like a kid on Christmas. Here you go, and the waitress half yells from across the dining room as she deftly navigates the tightly packed tables, which you now notice are bereft of other patrons. Horror creeps over your face as you stare down at your own face, reflected in a bowl of what appears to be vegetable soup. Oh, I'm sorry, I ordered the clam chowder you managed to tell the back of the waitress head as she makes a beeline for the kitchen. Oh the clams are in there, yeah just gotta mix it up a little. They just sink to the bottom, is all she calls back over her shoulder, before vanishing through the Hain Blue Saloon doors to the employee's only dimension. So this is it, huh? Today's the day I'm either going be that customer, or I'm gonna have to see what this whole Manhattan style thing is about. It can't be that bad. Is that a fucking carrot in my chowder? You think to yourself as your inner ice meal shrieks in dismay, while you reach for your ladle shaped plastic spoon. It smells fishy. And the potatoes are disintegrating on the spoon. The broth doesn't taste like tomato. It doesn't taste like any one thing. Or maybe it does. It tastes nondescriptly like a little bit of everything. 
it's pungent, but in the same way, as if you were to store everything in your fridge with the lids off. Kind of acidic, a little sweet, maybe a hint of salt. You can see flakes of some kind of rehydrated herb chasing your spoon as you swirl the gelatinous chunks of celery out of the way in the hunt for a piece of clam at the bottom of the bowl. Your stomach feels warm and more or less full, but you feel like there's still a void deep within. The rolls were great, but dipping them in the chowder just made wet bread. There's still half a bowl of cold soup sitting in front of you. There are new ingredients, but they didn't help. A few bloated oyster crackers bob amongst too many flecks of black pepper, and the floating pools of old bait tinted butter are already beginning to congeal. Leaning back in your seat, you realize that other than the sound of the wind growling at the windows, it's awful quiet. There's no sound from the kitchen. No sinks, no clatter of pots and pans. You think you can hear the faint jingle of Sid, swiveling all around, but you're not so sure if that's all in your head. You slip a ten under the edge of the bowl and stand, shrugging into your jacket. You can hear rain pissing sideways in waves as you reach for the door. It's already dark outside. It's what? 3.30, 4 o'clock. It is raining, so maybe it's earlier than that. You're not entirely sure. You half jog to your car, trying to turtle your already soaked cheeks into the collar of your jacket. As you brace to fight the wind against your car door, you hear the thud of a car door slam shut behind you. Thanks hun. Come back real soon. The waitress yells as she runs back to her shift from the safety of her cigarette smoke filled Cherokee. You're in your car, wipers waving panicked across the windshield at the storm before you. You take a deep breath and steal yourself for the drive home. Route 6 isn't that bad this time of year, but if you see a New York plate you promise yourself you'll give them a reason to hate the sucks.